evaluation process continues. So Rhonda's going to come on over here so that I can introduce her, and I'll continue <laughs> passing out the forms. All right, so here is Rania, Toastmasters, an honored guest. It's my distinct honor to introduce Rania Versum to you today. Rania burst onto the Toastmasters scene <laughs> in April 2014, and she's been showing us her superpowers ever since. She recently completed her CC, but she did this. Yay! She did this all while running her own company, RanyaVersen.com, a company that's dedicated to designing learning programs and paths for various organizations. While all that was happening, she oversaw the construction of her own home. So I think she is my inspiration when it comes to superpowers. As a Toastmaster, Rania is a keen evaluator. She's won competitions at the club and area level, and she has a knack for deconstructing speeches and providing feedback that leaves members feeling affirmed and motivated. What you're going to hear today is a speech, is a presentation based on her speech number eight, um, and she's going to bring to it her Toastmaster experience, her professional experience, so that you too can evaluate like a superhero. Well, welcome to Rania Versen. <laughs> everybody welcome it's so good to be here I just have to start with a moment of love because I'm feeling it in the room right now Tracy did an amazing job and nowhere else in the world do you get to hear these kinds of stories that's what I love about Toastmasters you get to hear so many diverse stories that just don't come naturally and really the crux of it is I've been able to see people learn and grow and break open in places that it just motivates and inspires me so today we're going to learn how to evaluate like a superhero. And what I want to do, go ahead, is uh, think about, can I use this information? Some of you might be thinking that right now. What I'd like you, or you might be thinking, what does evaluation have to do with superheroes? You will certainly find out. And what I'd like you to take away from this presentation is a framework or a way to up your game, to up your evaluation game. So as we go through the presentation, you have some handouts, and you're gonna take some notes, and we're gonna do some peer activities. This is gonna be an active presentation. It's not just gonna be me standing up, but I'm gonna put you guys to the task, and I'm hoping that you can walk away with the, at least one thing that makes your evaluation superpower. Okay, so how many of you have um, felt like this about evaluations? What am I going to say? Or how do I say it? Especially as the speeches get better and better, right? You think, how can I take all this information and put it into two minutes? Or maybe you felt like this, frustrated. Like, I can't listen to all this information and put it into a, a cogent two-minute speech. Or maybe you think, well, isn't that obvious? Shouldn't they know? <laughs> or maybe you just feel confused and overwhelmed. You're listening and hearing, but you're also evaluating. There's a lot going in your mind all at once, right? So it's quite normal to feel like this, confused, frustrated, concerned. How am I going to get it all out? How am I going to say something of value, of value? We all have these thoughts from time to time. So in what this presentation is going to give you is a way to stay focused in your evaluations and counteract some of this discomfort. Okay, so what are we gonna do? We are going to imagine our personal zone of superpower. And then we're gonna understand why giving feedback can be tough. I know it's intuitive and you all know it because you've all tried to do it, but actually there's some evidence that supports the claim that giving feedback is tough and I'm gonna share that with you. You're gonna learn three principles, just three. Three simple principles for giving a focused evaluation that you can take and use. You're going to replace your fears or discomfort with superpowers. And uh, you're going to take a framework to give your next evaluation. Okay, everybody on board with that? I'm board. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go. So why? Why learn how to give better evaluations? Anybody? Why do it? Uh, <coughs> 
employ or help someone to see, uh, you know, so that they can increase and, and become, you know, better, better at their jobs, yeah. better within themselves. Good. Yeah, thanks. You thanks. improve your listening skills. Sorry. Go ahead. You improve Mark. your listening skills even, yes. when you're, even when you're not alive. Exactly. Yeah. I think at the end of the day, you want a great output of the work you're doing. Yes. So you want to get good, good evaluation so that the person that is working in that project can give a, give a great output of the project. Great. A great output. Great. Anything else? Why give good evaluations? Yes. Well, <coughs> since, the evaluate, since the speaker themselves impacts a lot of audiences, if you can just save one speaker and make them a better speaker, yeah. you can save a lot of audiences out there. Yes, yeah, save a lot of audiences. Yeah. Yes, yeah. to the audiences. I don't like what you're thinking. The environment. Because giving a good evaluation helps the person that's speaking to be able to know where they may fall short. Yeah. You know, sometimes we can see things that in other people that they can't see themselves. Yes. So that's, you know, that it's helpful to them yeah, to get some, something from someone else. Great. And I saw one more hand. Give anybody else? Yes. It actually reinforces your skill Absolutely. in terms of what it is that you can do. Absolutely. So giving good evaluations is the opportunity to dissect a speech. It's an opportunity to decompose the speech elements and thus become a better speaker and a better competent and communicator, right? Has anybody heard the story of Prez, Prezrian Vasilev? He's a Chicagoan. He won the 2013 International Speech Competition. 30,000 participants from 116 countries. He's native Bulgarian speaker, meaning English is not his first language. He did it after three years in Toastmasters. Do you know how he did it? Evaluation. No TV. <laughs> There's the no TV. And he did it through evaluations. He was a, I, a friend who's in a club of his told me this story. He went and really went after the evaluations. He went club to club to club and broke down the distinctions of his speech until he knew it so well in three years a non-native speaker climbed to number one oh, international right. toastmaster okay. 30,000 people right. so i would say prez had superpowers and i say you've got them too okay so here are our superheroes when we talk about superheroes what do we think of strength Powerful. What else? See, being able to see through. Um, see through stuff. <laughs> Savior. Saviors. Integrity. Integrity. Thank you. Okay. Helps others. What'd you say? Helps others. Helps others. Cartoons. Cartoons. Okay. So we're going to use the interpretation of superheroes a little bit literally. So those are those are real superpowers like Myrna and I, Wonder Woman and Batman. But what, if we talk about superpowers in relationship to evaluation, what are some of the superpowers that make a great evaluation? What do you think? Listening skills. Listening skills. Okay, good. What else? Yes. What I feel is the uh, best way to do it is strengths. You first put the strength down of the person. Strength, yes. Yeah, so given the positive before right. the criticism, absolutely. And, and improvement areas, and they're usually minor. So the person can tweak them over time. They continue their strengths each, each speech and tweak the improvement areas. Yes, so Get focus on the strengths. Become a superman. You got it. What else? They leave the speaker with a growth point, a strong growth point. So they give detail. They leave a speaker with a growth point. Good. What Understand else? Understand their perspective. I mean, of the speaker get get the information from them and how they felt when they were doing it. Oh, so they get their they point exactly of view, their, their perspective. Exactly. Gotcha. I also found that when you're folk, when you're presenting the negatives, mm -hmm. use yourself in ex as an example. You know how you you know become a better speaker from making those same mistakes. I think that's helpful. Okay, good. So let's go on. So let, if we're thinking about we're using our imagination a little bit, so we're extending the idea of superpowers, which I want to say are not only your strengths, but they're aspirational. So I want you to think about what's the best you can possibly be when it comes to evaluating. What are those qualities, the best you can possibly be? So if we're thinking about Catwoman, what could be her evaluation superpowers? 
observations. Observation. Observation. So keen observer, mm -hmm. insight. Curiosity. What else? Curiosity. Curiosity. Anything else? Nobody's going to tell her what to do. So <laughs> she's got an opinion. <laughs> okay, next. What about this guy? Does anybody know who this is? Napoleon. <laughs> this is Napoleon. <laughs> He's an interpretive superhero. What are his evaluation superpowers if you just had to imagine? What does he have that's relevant? Urgency. Urgency. <laughs> Energy. Energy. Courage. Courage. Ego. Ego. <laughs> so he's direct. He's focused. Yeah? Okay, how about the next? Does anyone know who this is? Iron Man. Iron Man. What are his superpowers? Able to snub the Senate. What'd you say? Snub the Senate. Okay, all right. Well, we don't want to do that when we're evaluating. No snubbery. So it's a knowledge. Knowledge. Okay. So knowledge of what in terms of an evaluation? How about the, the what subject, you are presenting? The subject matter. The subject, the subject matter, matter or the speech elements. Really good. Content. Okay, good. And the next one? This is, an, again, interpretive. I love her. Yeah. She's my superhero. Yeah. What kind of qualities does Creativity. this... Creativity. Creativity. So how would that relate to evaluation? Um, Presentation. Like the... Yeah, the way you present. Absolutely. Okay, good. Yeah, what you were going to say back there? That's exactly. Okay, the way you present it. So maybe with some humor or some energy or panache. What else? Also finding it in a very strong speech, which is often a challenge to evaluate, finding a way that that speech could become even better. Yes. Sometimes that requires creativity. Absolutely, right? How do you make a great speech even yeah. better? It's really churning the imagination. You okay. Need this too. What about these superpowers? How do they relate to evaluation? <laughs> Cut to the core. Cut to the core. I like that. What is the essence of what works or what doesn't work? Right? Show the light, maybe. Show a way forward. Giving those key elements so somebody can actually make their speech better. Okay? So now we want to know what are your evaluation superpowers? <clears throat> I'd like to take just a reflective moment, and I want you to think about your own evaluation strengths. What are your strengths, but not just your strengths. What do you hope to achieve if you were the best evaluator on the planet? You are a superhero evaluator. So to help you think, I'm going to show you mine. Here, here he is, the Buddha, but this is actually Buddha Burnett. <laughs> because what I aspire to is to be wise and insightful and helpful and resourceful like the Buddha, but I want it to be funny. That's why I picked the funniest gal in my club to be my mentor. So this is what I aspire to. This is my superhero. So what I want to do now for a moment, and if everybody has a partner, what we're going to do is take a two-minute exercise and think of, and you can write on your sheets. There's a, a place on your sheets to capture this. I want you to capture your own evaluation superpower. So think about who would that person be, that, that superhero, what does he look like, and use your imagination. Disguise the limits. And then what are the qualities? Don't think of too many, but what are the essential qualities that are your strengths and your aspirational goals? So find a partner. And go ahead and tell your partner, we'll take two minutes on this exercise. So one minute, I'll ding the bell, and then you'll switch. Partner A will go, and this is partners. I love my two minutes. Okay, let's all come back. So does anybody want to share their evaluation superhero with the rest of the room? What did you come up with? Mine is this right here. Okay. It helps them out a lot. <laughs> okay, good. All right. So what's your superhero? Oh, who is my superhero? Yeah. Uh, oh, my. Uh, oh, I'm Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman, yeah. and she has empathy. She understands where human nature and where another person's coming from, so okay. she can pull out. Great. Yeah. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Great. Wonderful. Anybody else want to share their superhero? What you came up with? Yes. Captain Picard. Captain yes. Picard. Yes. yes. And what, what what qualities does he bring to an evaluation? He's he's very wise and insightful. Yes, absolutely. I loved him. Anybody else? Yes. I'm a big jazz fan. Oh, excellent. And my superhero would be Ella. Oh, oh Ella. And what does she bring? She brings an, an eloquence yes. of her voice as well as 
brilliant improvisation. Yes, and I get that from you too. I get that eloquence. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes, Sylvia. My show. My show. <laughs> and what do you bring to evaluations? Um, you're a superhero. Uh, I agree. We know you're a genius. <laughs> no, I'm not a genius. I'm just, I have self love. So I'm not a superhero. I impart that to people and they yes. feel it. And they feel good. Wonderful. So you can help the medicine go down. Right. <laughs> The young lady that mentioned Captain Picard, I would have to say Lieutenant Commander Data on Star Trek The Next Generation because he's always willing to listen and yes. always ask questions. Yes! I love that. And he's the best listener yes. for a robot, isn't he? <laughs> Actually, I think Martin Luther King would be my superhero oh, yeah. because he is inspirational. He inspires yeah. Yeah. generations of people still. Yeah. And what a great aspiration to leave people wanting to give better and better speeches, huh? What Wonderful. Martin, MLK, oh, Martin, Martin Luther King. King. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And how about you? It wouldn't be one, it would be uh, yeah. the Fantastic Four. Uh -huh. uh, I love that. Because Take it on, each girl. one of them had their own special traits and talents, uh -huh. but they worked as a team. Yeah. Okay, so you're going to bring that diverse perspective of four people to your evaluations. Mm -hmm. Love it. Yeah. Barack Obama. Barack and his, Obama. And his, and his, his appreciation with the spoken word. Yes. Always careful. Right. Yeah. Always eloquent, yes. but to the point. Which is a great thing to focus on in an evaluation, right? Language and how language affects us. Anybody else? One more. Want to share? Yeah. Like a mashup of Woody Allen and Carl Sagan. I love it. <laughs> Why? What's well, Woody Allen I like for his humor and his kind of self-deprecating thing, and, yeah. and Carl because he's just so darn smart. I, I love it. Who? That's something to aspire to. Okay, so. That's great. Keep those superheroes in mind. We're going to come back to them. Okay? But right now I want to talk about feedback. What is feedback? If you look at these definitions, take a moment to read them. I apologize if you're behind the poll for some of you. But what do you see? What's the theme here in, this, in these definitions of feedback? What do you see here? Yeah. The word that jumps up means helpful. Helpful. Okay, good. Anything else? It's an echoing. Okay, it's an echoing to some extent. That's, we're getting there. Anything else? Improvement. Improvement, absolutely. Constructive criticism. Constructive criticism. Information. Information. Yeah, so I'm going to jump off the echo idea and propose that feedback is a signal in the system. It's, a, it's an a, it's a res action response. Something happens and something else happens. A green light goes off and the belt moves. I press a button, everything stops. I shoot some guy in a video game, he goes down. It's signal <coughs> response. Action, reaction. That's feedback. Okay? Evaluation is a type of feedback. It's slightly more complex than signal response, but the essence is there. So feedback is a return to the system that helps the system improve. It's a signal. So I bet you're thinking, but it's not that easy. And what about all those people that don't take it so well? <laughs> well, criticism is a part of human nature. We have a natural reaction. And I know many of you instinctively and through experience know that giving feedback isn't quite as easy as signal response. And the research actually bears that out. So this is a, a research paper from Harvard Business Review. It's in your packets. If you want to look it up and read it, you can. But what's fascinating about this research is that it validates a couple things for us. One, it says that people do get defensive, surprise, surprise. But the interesting thing about that is they do it across cultures the same way. So every human being, when faced with criticism from time to time, does get defensive or can get defensive. A second interesting thing is that um, another reason that feedback is so difficult is because there's no one standard way to give feedback. In other words, it's elemental, right? It's, and this research was done about the performance environment in work. So there's a lot of elements. There's 
the environment, there's the person, there's the meeting agenda, etc. So that there's no one way. When people are motivated to be defensive, they are going to go at your evaluation for being not fair or not accurate. Not fair or not accurate. And I'm going to show you ways to supersede that in just a moment. The third thing that's interesting about this research is there are actually some people that need a lot of feedback or get anxiety. It's anxiety producing to have a lack of feedback. And when they say what kind of feedback that they would want, they say they want more feedback in breadth and in depth. So they want more comprehensive feedback, tell me everything I did right or wrong, and they want more depth, they want the detail. So I'm going to show you that too, how to get into a little bit more to the detail in your evaluations. Okay, so the evidence says, what do you think is, this, is the single thing that makes feedback effective? Being received? Yep. Okay. <coughs> it, that's true. Mm -hmm. But there's a, there's a central piece here. Delivery. Mm -hmm. yes. okay. How it's presented. Well, okay, so that's what's so interesting, right? The, the thing that buttresses or the foundation of effective feedback is alignment. Mm -hmm. It's the goal. It's that we're all on the same page, willing to, for the purpose of feedback, and willing to receive the feedback. So here's the advantage that we have at Toastmasters. We have a standard, first of all, we have a common goal, right? What's our goal? To get better. To get better. We're all, we're, you know, we're growers and we're learners. That's why we're here. You wouldn't be in this room if you weren't. So we have an aligned goal. We have a standard understanding of what we're doing here. What else is standard? You know you're going to give an evaluation. If you, if you know it's going to be two minutes, and you know, you know where you're going to go on the agenda. So that should give you some heart <laughs> in some ways because that is a central um, uh, uh, element of giving effective feedback. So we've got that. We've got that in Toastmasters. How about non-judgment? Non-judgmental. Thank you, Alyssa. That's where we're going to go next. So how do we, because some people are going to get defensive, right? That's another natural human intensity. So how do we, so our goal as evaluators is to help bring down that defensiveness, to help moderate for potential defensiveness. Next slide. So along those lines, is this effective feedback? No. And you've all seen this a million times, right? I mean, how many of you have been reviewed like this at your job? <laughs> awesome, you do great, you know. Oh, you're bad, you're, you're marginal, you're satisfactory. What does that mean? <laughs> right? What do these mean? We have no idea what these mean. What is awesome? I love to hear it. You're awesome. Thank you. But what does it mean? I really don't know what that person thinks. And what can I do? You know, like, is that a signal? No, because I don't know what to do. It's not a clear signal. And it's, it, these, this is judgmental language in the fact that it's a value that you're casting on someone else. And that, my friends, will bring up defensiveness if the person is so inclined. So we want to stay away from this kind of language. And where do we want to head towards? What's more effective than these kinds of words? More specific <laughs> yeah. phrase or and criticism. Yeah. If they didn't want to just said, oh, you, you're awesome, you might be like, okay, but that's going to be hard to maintain. Yeah. You can maintain <laughs> oh, being awesome. God. Yeah. But if there's specific things that you did well, yeah. Yeah. other things that you can do better, then yeah. it's much easier to okay. address those. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Specific strengths like eye contact, yeah. vocal variety. Good. Yeah. Okay, you guys are so ahead of me. Yeah. I was thinking in terms of speaking in the context of my experience as the listener. Yes. As opposed Beautiful. to saying a global statement about things. Okay, you guys all spot on. I'm going to show you how to wrap that up in three principles. No. <laughs> <laughs> number one, principle one, number one, this is in your hand up. Be a builder. Be a builder. That means know your speech elements. Know where you're going. A builder knows the difference between a house that can last for 100 years and a house that's going to fall down tomorrow. Right. Believe me, my builder did, and he went in between. <laughs> <laughs> our house is our speech. So you have got to know your, um, know your speech elements, right? 
So what are, what comprises a, 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 an excellent speech? What are some speech elements? What are speech Great body elements? Language. Body, language, I'm not body language, okay, good. Good introduction. A good introduction. Subject knowledge. Subject knowledge, excellent. Structure. Okay, good. Time management. Okay, time, okay, all these. All so we're gonna do an exercise in just a minute. I'm gonna get this all out on the table. So just like a home has a blueprint, a foundation, and finishings, your speech has an evident outline or framework, right? It has a beginning, middle, and end. I like to say story arc. And it has details that make it worthwhile listening, right? So what I want you to do now is we're going to do another partner exercise. You're going to, it's going to go quick, but you're going to take one minute, and on your sheet of paper, you're going to list out all the speech elements you can think of. All the speech elements. And then I'm going to ding my little Tibetan bowl. And you're going to turn to your partner and come up with the three most essential or the three most fundamental speech elements. Questions? Okay. It's in there. Yeah, it's on form. Uh, we'll look for them. Yeah. Okay, so go ahead and get started. say well organized. Speech elements. Just a <laughs> which, which means <laughs> which underneath those is those yeah. things. Yeah. to the audience. Great. Okay. Organized speech, good introduction, great. body, and conclusion, and an engaged facial expression or expression of personality. Okay, great. That's a framework. Those are three things that you can just put in your mind for your next evaluation. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. That is funny. They are like really similar to them, actually. We have, the, we have the main message that is what is important to the audience. Yes. What are they taking right. away? Main message. The organization of the speech, Pattern. of course. Mm -hmm. And the storytelling that is engaged. The storytelling. Yeah. That's a framework that you can take into your next evaluation. Mm -hmm. That's good. Got uh, actually a four instead of three. Okay, all right, you guys make it harder on yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so there are basically there are four acts in your speech A, C, T, and S. Got so up, attention, there you go. Attention, like the audience attention all the way through. Yeah. Then content, so it's a content story, something. Then your technique, how to do something. And then you sell them at the end. If you switch that order around, okay. it doesn't really work as well, but that's, that's a good order. That's a framework with an acronym. That's wonderful. Yes. I don't know if he touches, but transitioning from yeah. one subject. Yeah, yeah, good, good, important. Yeah, Ron. We had one that um, has been mentioned. That's keep it simple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 yeah, good. Anything else that hasn't been mentioned? We also included eye contact. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Discussing it. That Engagement. It, that, that that will make you pay attention, even if the speech may not be the best. Yeah. You're still going to be present. Wonderful. Love it. Okay, you guys did excellent on that. Those are that's a takeaway. That, that's your framework. Be a builder. Number two. Illustrate, illustrate, illustrate. You guys brought it up before. You know, if value judgments aren't good, what's good? Detail. Okay? So you gotta help guide me. Give me those signals. <laughs> so when you um, have your eye on the specific elements, you've got your kind of three things in mind or four things in mind, then you can fill in underneath those things what is the detail, what makes a good opening, what makes a, uh, a good engagement strategy, right? What makes a good storyline? 
And so here's an example. This guy is giving her feedback and he's saying, when you described the room and said the table was black and saturated with a coffee stain, he's feeding back her exact words. I could picture the scene as if I were in your kitchen. So, and she's going, yeah, cool, that's what I was going for. So he's giving some feedback, some essence. He's saying, I'm there, I'm engaged, I like that, you got me, right? So he's feeding back. What are some tactics to do this? What are some tactics to incorporate giving detail or illustrating your points? Example. Giving examples, right? So, so, and how do you do that? How do you, because there's a lot going on, right? And do you know you actually can't listen and think at the same time? Mm. They're actually, it's impossible. You actually can't. So they're going on really rapidly, right, together. So you, how do you do that? When you're listening and trying to comprehend and you've got a dual process in your mind that's trying to evaluate, how do you do that? Tips, ideas? Yes. Well, I, I tend to listen for certain things. There are certain things I'm looking for. Yeah. It's like if I see, hear them, great. If I don't, there's a gap, and I'll have to deal with that in the growth area. Yeah. So what, one way I train my trainers is I tell them keywords. If you put, just write a keyword, you know, especially if somebody says, like, saturated. And I, that word means, it rings for me, like you're saying. Then I write down saturated, and when I can get up there, I can look at my note really quick and go, oh, yeah, that made me feel. This is what I thought. So keywords under your structure, under your one, two, three, keywords is a good way to feed back detailed information. Anything else? What other tips do you have for illustrating? You should never tell the speaker you failed to do something. You should say, what I saw, what I heard, yeah. what I felt. Yeah, we're, and yeah. then detail that out. Thank you. We're go yeah, that's a, a specific oh, that's tip. Okay. Yeah, but you got it right. <laughs> yeah, because what's going to happen if you t say that? The defense wall. I'm not listening. I might be here, but I'll speak to the hands. <laughs> and and it's just it, it's human. What else? What are other details? I mean, ways to illustrate. Com compare or contrast. Yes, compare or contrast. Thing, uh, yeah, it's like this. Or when you say this, this is what comes to mind. Or I think of this. Yeah. Also note and look around the room and see how the audience is reacting. To yes. Not just you as the listener, but see how the audience reacts too. Brilliant. I, you know, I looked around the room and I saw every single person in this room smiling. Yeah. You know, that tells you something. That's feedback. Yeah. That's a signal. Okay. Any other ideas? I think Ron is really good at this. Like <laughs> saying how it makes you think and feel. Like it's okay to say. I felt, if it's invoking an emotion in me, I would take, say that's a good thing, right? Because just like a good TV program or a movie, if, you're, if it's invoking something in you, you're engaged. So sharing your, your thoughts or feelings, your own personal reactions is also a good signaling system. Any other tips or things you want to say about illustrate, illustrate, illustrate? Be a builder, illustrate your points. Number three, own it. I so this. Thank you. Own it. So um, we gotta go fast now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so point number three. Um, let's face it. Feedback is an opinion, and it's your opinion, and it's valid. Each one of us has a point of view. So this sometimes is the hardest point for people. You get to say what you think, and it's valid. Now. I think you said it earlier, you can't say you suck or anything like that. So, you know, how do you make the medicine go down? Humor works. What are some other ways to remember your strategy is to purposely bring down defensiveness? Yes. Ask for clarification. Ask for clarification. Okay, so I heard this. What did you tell me more about what you meant about that? If, if you say maybe next time you could include this, so, so for the future. I yeah, and, and be that. careful about the maybe, you know, because again, you can own it and you can say, from my point of view, I would suggest in doing the, it in the future. You know, take it or leave it. Take what you like and leave the rest, right? So, but when I say own it, I mean own it. You believe it, you think it, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, Ron. Presented as an opportunity. Presenting, and you do a great job at that. Yeah, presented as an opportunity. Here's an opportunity. You know, you may not like it. You, you, it may not be for you, but here's 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 something to think about. 
right? What else? You can use good and better. It was good. It could be better if you did. I think it could be better if you did these sort of things. Yes, and be careful the value judgment words. Yes. Yeah, careful the value judgment words. Yeah. I recall, I think someone over here had said delivery. I think mm -hmm. this gentleman said delivery mm -hmm. in terms of how, how you present mm -hmm. your 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 body language yes. says a lot. Yes. If you have your hand on your hip and you're looking, yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. I don't I don't think yeah. I would want that in terms yeah. of feedback. So you know, I believe yeah. when you prepare to evaluate, you yeah. it, it, you're you're sitting at your seat or you're standing or or, or at the podium, yeah. your body language. I think we should smile. Yeah. and say, wow, that was really something, yeah. and then go through your, your That's routine. actually really smart because what I tend to be a passionate person, I don't know if you can yeah. tell, but <laughs> right. so, you know, that is hard for some people because it's a lot it of is. energy. It is. So when I give evaluations, I actually purposely try to pull it back and do a more even toned and yeah. a more smooth delivery, and I talk like this, and I'm not quite the superwoman that I am right now. So. Um, but, you know, what I'm saying is that it does help to alter your body language. Um, and the other thing is to the things that you, nobody's really mentioned or maybe you have, but from my point of view, or for me this was, what I interpreted was, my understanding of that point was, right, using the I own it. Because, and I'll tell you what, that's helpful for your partners and your kids. Mm -hmm. Because nobody wants to hear <laughs> you, you, right. you, right. the finger pointing. If you take it over here, you're owning it. And the person, it leaves the person free to take it or leave it. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. There's a trick of the trade for everybody. You don't, if somebody really botches the speech, you don't have to bring it out in the evaluation. No, you they know, make it they know what they did. Uh, let's they talk about it offline. And then you talk to them yeah. afterwards. Yeah. So you don't embarrass the person because you know if you're going to be an honest evaluator, yeah. you better bring that out. But you and you, you, you bring up a really good point. And you know what I often do when I saw, see that is I t tend to go towards the superhero aspirational point. And what I do is I highlight the person's positive qualities as yeah. many oh, as I sure. can find for and sure. see. Because everybody's got that potential, but we botch it because we're learning. We botch it because, you know, that's what we do, and that's how you get better. So it's really not about the botch. It's really about what's possible. You Looking encourage. What's possible. You are encouraging And someone. encourage and support. And motivating them. Yeah. Especially if it's their, their icebreaker speech yeah. and you're, like, really nervous. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I'll go out there and I'll say, you, this is your first time. I think you did really great for your first time actually coming out of the box here. Yeah, you, you might have felt a little nervous, but obviously they felt nervous, and they'll, they'll say, yeah, I, I'm yeah. nervous. See, but, you know, that gets better over time. If yeah. you do more of it, you get better at yeah. it. So, you know, don't, because otherwise they feel like, oh, I, this is terrible, I can't do this. You say, no, you did really good. <laughs> you know, this is your first shot. Yeah. You get better over time. Yeah. And, you know, just keep working at it. I'll work with you and help yeah. you. Yeah, good, thank you. you. Yeah, and then we got to move on. I've learned that encouragement. Yeah is one of the strongest forms of yes. motivation. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, thank you. Yes, so you guys got it, and we're all nice people. So what I want to just emphasize is it's, the, it's that line between owning it and being clear about your thoughts and thinking and being encouraging. Don't get squishy in between. That's when the signal's not clear. A couple things to avoid. Talking about yourself, you can you you can be self-referential if you've got a comparison point, but really you've got precious two or three minutes. What are those two or three minutes about? The speech, the speech elements. It's the speech elements, right? It's what you. It's the framework that you've written down and the detail underneath. It's giving back as much detail in within a structure that creates a signal for that person to grow and improve. Giving general advice like on the internet, I saw this guy and he did this, or my grandma used to say, or you know, they have a sale on notebook at Walmart. I mean, nobody cares. We really want to hear about your speech and the speech element. Break it down. Don't give advice. Summarizing without any critical elements. Summarizing means that you've been a very good listener and that you got the speech, but it leaves off the signal part. So really, you've got to have some critique. And again, I, think, I don't think I said it, but both sides of the coin. You can break down the positive just as much as you can break down the, the critical or the, the weakness, right? So again, it's about deconstructing. That's how Prez did it. 
deconstructing, deconstructing, and giving back that detail as signals. And then, you said this before, always, I say to my trainers, give a warm fuzzy before you go into the critique. Because again, that just prepares us and opens us up to hear what you're saying. Okay, so in summary, be a builder, keep your eye on the speech, illustrate both sides of the coin, what worked, what didn't, with detail, and then own it. Be strong in your point of view, but graceful in your delivery. So, before we leave, what's your <laughs> kryptonite? Okay, Superman and all superheroes have a weak spot. So do we. So what we want to do very quickly is um, get out all our discomforts, right? Everybody, we're here, we're learners, we're growers, and you've got some discomfort. So in one, we're going to do a couple of activities very quickly. And in one, dunk, and in one minute, <laughs> well, I want to know what do you know? I want you to take a self-reflective moment and write down in one minute all your fears, concerns, discomforts for giving evaluation. It's on a piece of paper anywhere. Go. One minute. Fears, concerns for giving an evaluation. running short on time so just keep that list keep that list I'm not going to ask you for it it's your own private Idaho so now I'm going to do a 30 second green monkey thought experiment take 30 seconds think about reflect on what you've learned summarize it in your own mind but do not think about a green monkey whatever you do do not think about this green monkey <laughs> swimming from a tree or in a cage or escaping in the jungle do not think about this green monkey think about what you learned today go 30 seconds <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that was a quick 30 seconds. I think you got the point. <laughs> I think you got the point. What did you think about? The green monkey. Yeah. The green monkey, right? So what happens when we try to control or focus on our fears? We use mind power, thought control to focus on our fears or our nervousness or our kryptonite or our weaknesses. What happens? The brain shuts down. down. <laughs> you get what you think about, right? So you're actually bringing it towards you. It's the opposite of what you want. So what do we can we do instead? Ten seconds. What can we do instead? Focus on the positive. Focus on your evaluation superhero. Three things. Keep your framework in mind. Use a framework. Use those three things. Fill in detail underneath. Focus on your aspirational qualities. Know you're going to get there as your own personal superhero. And then do the power pose. Everybody, one moment, stand up, do this. It feels great before an evaluation course. <laughs> no, it's this. Amy Cuddy on the Okay. That was a good All right. And is there another one? Okay, so one thing you're going to take away on your way out, fill out your evaluations. Um, if you, I'd love to hear, I want you guys to try one thing that you're taking away from here. Email me at ronyaverson.info and let me know how it goes. If you want a, a packet, you can email me too, and I'll put it up on my website. So one thing that you will do differently and fill out your evaluations. Thank you so much. Thank you. I want to take a quick minute to present Rania with her uh, certification of participation. It comes from Toastmasters Leadership Institute. You did a lot of work today. There's a lot of work that goes into this, a lot of love that goes into this. You are an ex a huge example for Unity Toastmasters and Unity Toastmasters everywhere. So please accept this on behalf of Toastmasters International. Thank you. Thank you so much. Collect evaluations. Be your own evaluation superhero.